Hey YouTube uh, brothers and sisters, I wanted to come and share something with you today. Um, bear with me because I'm going to put this in two or three uh, videos just to keep the length of them down. Um, I wanted to come to you today and talk to you about the Bride of Christ and some things that you're going to see happening before um, too much longer, I feel. Um, as you know, I've got notes and some things I wanted to sh share with you as, as well along with this, so bear with me. Um, okay, in the beginning, God was. Before there was even a formation of a earth, it was without void, God was, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. The Holy Spirit was the breath, and it moved upon the waters, and... Um, you can see that in the first uh, book of Genesis, actually. Um, but God sent his son, that was the word, to become flesh. So, this is, um, this is going to take a little bit of um, spiritual looking into. Because it's more than just the word became flesh, died on the cross for our sins, and then we're going to be raised up in the last day. That's a lot of what we've been taught in um, denomination. And sometimes it's hard to get past the simple-minded uh, aspect of Christ. He is very divine, and he was God all at the same time. And we're blessed with the gift of his Holy Spirit, which is very powerful to put a um, lock on the Holy Spirit or to put a boundary on the Holy Spirit is to grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit created this earth. You forget this Holy Spirit that abides in us if you are a filled believer in Jesus Christ um, moved upon the face of the earth. Just think about what you could do, be it the Holy Spirit's will, but the power that will abide in you, being a Spirit-filled Christian. Sometimes I get on here and I, I think to myself, I, I might not be eloquent enough to speak, but you know there are times when people have messaged me back and they told me that this spoke to them and this scripture came to them and they liked how I said this and I'm thinking, I never remembered saying that. But wow, the Holy Spirit really spoke through me, even though I was unaware of it. It's um, a seed being being spread. He is the seed. And, okay, let me start from the beginning. I've got my notes here, so it'll make maybe a little more sense than me trying to explain it to you. Okay, Jesus is the Word, and His Word became flesh. You've got Christ is the head of our bodies. He is the head. Without the head, the body does not move. The body cannot act. It can't put forth its actions. And the bride is the body. If you will, turn to 1 Peter 5. And I wanted to share with you this. This kind of just came about. It says, The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory of that shall be revealed. Okay? This hasn't been revealed yet. It's obviously going to be revealed in a future tense at this present time when he's writing this, and it was written in uh, 65 AD. It says, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, this is not putting it into a boundary, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, that is a willing mind, that is a put all things aside, be completely moldable for God, know when he is speaking to you. Okay, verse 3 says, Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Speaks for itself. Um. Right here in 4, it says, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. This is when we're going to be manifested. The true bride 
is going to be manifested to appear in his glory because she is becoming one with Christ. She is becoming the living word. She is walking out the will. There is not one time in this Bible that Christ tells us not to do what, what he did. He says, you walk as I, I walked. And it's in John. It says right here, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Right here, he cannot use a body that is um, got pride in it. He's going to use the humble of heart. Why? Because the humble has taken all that stony heart away and they're moldable and they're moving around to his will because he's the, the head and we are the body. And then it says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that, ye may, that he may exalt you in due time. This is talking about the future, the crown of glory is received in the end. This is where he is trying to trans... He's talking about the transfiguration, the manifestation of us becoming one with Christ. Right now, we are all espoused. We are betrothed or engaged, just like Mary was with Joseph, but they weren't married. That's why she was a virgin still, because back then when you got married... You had to consummate with your spouse. Okay? And then, I'm going to stop 